When God touches a life, there's a ripple effect. I've experienced it firsthand. This is the story of my family. My name is Steve Voss. I grew up on a ranch in Oregon, and life was idyllic. But when I was seven, my little sister died. It still amazes me how God blessed us through that tragedy. You'd have to call it a miracle, especially if you know anything about my dad. As a young man, Jim Voss was a bad guy, a petty criminal. Then his life crossed paths with a passionate believer and everything changed. Dad was born in Los Angeles. He was a smart kid, but he made some dumb choices. This is a mugshot from when he was arrested for armed robbery. He went to prison. Then he was thrown out of college for draining the school bank account. He joined the military, became a captain, committed theft, and was sentenced to prison again. Dad had no qualms about lying, even to the love of his life. He married Alice Park, but he wasn't honest with her about his past or his present. He had a successful electronics business, even working with the LAPD doing electronic eavesdropping or wiretapping. But unbeknownst to the police department or my mom, he was leading a criminal life of his own, working with the mob. He was the right hand to notorious gangster Mickey Cohen, using his electronic wizardry to fix bets. Dad was leading a dark double life. It just so happened that at the height of Dad's criminal activity, a tent revival was underway in Los Angeles. The largest tent ever erected for a revival meeting called the Canvas Cathedral. Day after day, thousands of people flocked to hear a young evangelist by the name of Billy Graham preach the gospel. I do not believe that any man, that any man can solve the problems of life without Jesus Christ. Somehow, even my dad was drawn to the tent. November 6th, 1949. The Lord Jesus Christ can be received. Your sins forgiven. Your burdens lifted. Your problems solved by turning your life over to him, repenting of your sin, and turning to Jesus Christ as Savior. Shall we pray? That night, Dad publicly accepted Christ into his life. My dad's conversion made headlines. There were books about why he quit syndicated crime, and a movie about his life followed. As I've stood here this evening, I've felt all evening that there's a man somewhere in this audience, and the Spirit of God is striving mightily with him at this moment. And if he doesn't come to Christ now, he may never come. We're going to wait a moment. There's still time for you to come. You come and give your life to Christ. Dad's conversion was dramatic, but more important, it was heartfelt. Billy Graham talked about it nine years later. We were holding a great crusade, and Life magazine became interested, and so they came out to take pictures, and there were four rather prominent people who had come to Christ. And I remember that one of the reporters said to me as the picture of these four was being taken, he said, I'd like to see them 10 years from now, in other words, very cynically, he was saying, I don't think they'll last, but here they are nine years later. The first one was Jim Voss. He had come from the underworld. And when the invitation was given, he came forward to give his life to Christ. One of the things that encouraged me about Jim Voss's decision nine years ago was the fact that he knew that he had a lot of debts to pay. He sold his home, he sold everything he had, loaded up his automobile and took all of these things that he had taken from other people unlawfully, took them back and made restitution. And that is a sure sign that a man has been born again of the Spirit of God. Jim, I want you to come and say just a word of testimony. And I recall the decision made. I recall the power that I found in Christ. For it wasn't that I got religion or decided to reform, but rather that I accepted Christ as Savior and Master of my living. Dad devoted the rest of his life to serving God. 
and with the same kind of electronic wizardry he'd used for evil, he got the attention of teen gang members in Harlem and delivered a message of hope and salvation. Later, Dad founded a Christian camp and other outreaches. He never tired of sharing the gospel. Dad's in heaven now, but there's not a day that goes by where his influence isn't still felt. I've certainly felt it in my life. In the music industry, I've worked with big stars, performed on many stages, and won awards. But most important to me now is using my songs, like my dad used electronics, to share God's love. I'd welcome the chance to sing for you, to tell the story of my family, our faith, and a revival that started over 60 years ago that isn't over yet. I hear the voice of one crying Prepare ye Prepare ye the way of the Lord Revive us Revive Bye.